Hi, I'm Corey Cummings, Manager of Web Analytics with Alight Analytics, and today I'll be showing how you can access elements on the page through some simple JavaScript and then use that within GTM even if that data is not stored within the data layer. So if we take a look at Alight's blog, we'll see the article title, author, and publish date. And we want to pull that information into GTM. We'll start with the article title. The article title can be found in a few different locations, but we're going to be pulling it from the page title. To do this, inside of GTM, we'll create a new custom JavaScript macro. We're going to set that using the JavaScript method document.title, and then we want to split that article title so that we only get the first part and not the entire page title. So we're going to split it out of the hyphen and then only grab the first string. With all custom JavaScript tags, you need to wrap that in a function and return your variable name. You also notice that we're calling the dot trim method, and that's just to remove any additional white space. Next, we'll take a look at how to grab the author name. If you're in Chrome, you can right click on an element and then select inspect your element. This will bring up Chrome's developer tools, which will allow us to see exactly how that tag is wrapped. What we'll notice is that the author has a class of author. So back in Google Tag Manager, we'll create a new custom JavaScript macro. We're going to use the query selector to find the author class. And then we only want the outer text rather than the entire HTML string. And to make it cleaner in reports, we're going to use the replace method to replace the words by with an empty text. Again, we're going to wrap that in a function and return the variable. Next, we're going to grab the post date. Similar to the author, we right click, inspect element, and we'll see that the div class is time. So again, within Google Tag Manager, We'll create a new custom JavaScript tag, which I've called article date. We'll create a new variable, set that to document.querySelector, and we're going to look for the dot time class, and we only want the text content. And then we'll return the new variable that we set. So we can take a look at this in debug mode and see what those new variables will look like. Down at the bottom, you can see our new macros, article author, article date, and article title. These new macros could be used in a variety of ways, including custom events, custom reports, or as dimensions in themselves. So that's a few different ways that we can use JavaScript inside of GTM to populate values that may not be present in the data layer.